Yeah, I think so. Hi everyone. <clears throat> Just so you know, I'm on a I'm on, I think I'm a little bit early, so um ah, and also if anybody's on if you just type in hello in the bar so I know who's watching and I can say hello back and this is basically the we're going to make a two fat today so we're going to make two for one today so I'm going to show you how to do all this as well all right this is and today I'm going to use blue card navy card and two white sheets yeah that's what you're going to need <clears throat> Hi Deborah, how are you? Hope you're feeling a bit better. So how is everybody tonight? I'm gonna leave it a couple of minutes and then we, we'll get going because we are on a little bit early. But I just wanna show that I'm gonna do two cards today and it's all from, from DL car, DL stamps. These are rubber mounted ones, but you can use your your normal ones as well. Oh, good. I'm glad you're okay, Deborah. So we'll just give it another minute, give a few more people a chance to get on. So we've decided to do it seven after Gavin's um, little uh, questionnaire thing on online. Hi Donna, you alright? Hi Tracy. So seven o'clock was the good time for everybody or a lot of people, so that's why we decided to try it at seven tonight. Okay, so I think it's seven o'clock now. I'll just wait for it to go to seven oh one and then I'll get started. Okay. So yeah, so these are the two cards and Use pixie powders on these, so I don't know if you can see the little shimmer on that. I'll bring it up. Oh, there we are. You can see it now when I do it like that. So that's the shimmer, and then that's the shimmer on that one as well. All right. Okay, there we are. Hi, Helen. How are you? evening evening so on this one I've actually used the the stargazing which is Tetsco camping and the stars at night but on today's one I'm actually going to use the undersea one and this one is called treasures of the sea but any sort of, of the design boutique DL stamps will work so they are Christmas ones as well Okay, I'm going to keep leaning over because I want to make sure I'm not missing any messages. <clears throat> okay, so, so this is what we're going to do. So I'm glad we got a few people along, that's fine. So I'm going to make a start now, okay? So I'm just going to pop some of these stamps away. But these are the ones I've got stargazing, I've got sort of the, the lovers, I've got fishing on a deck and I've got fairies but there are penguins and all sorts of other ones that that are all everywhere Ooh, what have I missed there sorry I'm gonna move this tablet so it's closer so I can just tap it so it's not in the way all the time Really potty. I don't know why Facebook doesn't let them leave the comments up anymore, but they tend to vanish. That's okay, Tracy, that's no problem at all. We wanted to do what time would be best, really. So I'm hoping this will all get done within 
or under an hour so we're not going to be here too long anyway okay so just a nice demo I'm going to show you how to make two cards out of one sort of thing okay so let's get on with it I'm going to put these to the back just so you can still see them and make sure you can still see them there there we are so that's that and then I'm going to start with the cutting and making my base cards so first things first I've got two pieces of A4 white card now this is our pick and mix white card because I might want spritz so if you want to spritz anything it's best to have sort of white card that can take a little bit of water so that's the reason I'm doing that okay and to start it off I'm going to take both pieces one at a time into my guillotine and hi mum how are you and then what I'm going to do I'm going to pop it to 20 centimeters while it's landscape and I'm going to cut it okay it's already 21 centimeters the other way and I'm going to do the same with the other card okay so push it into 20 and the other way would be 21 already I'm going to pop that to the side of it and I'm going to bring in my scoreboard so I like to make my cards and then just buy envelopes but obviously if you've got DL cards and envelopes you can do that as well okay and I'm going to put them on my scoreboard now I pop it all the way to the corner and the white end bit here should end on 20 if it ends on 21 then just turn it around like that so there we are that's on 21 I'll turn it around and put it on 20 I'm just going to score these cards at 10 centimeters okay you can flip it over if you want and score from the other side and then that makes my DL base I'm going to do the same with the other one so don't get if there are any questions as well don't be afraid to ask if I don't answer them I'm sure Gavin will he's on the other side on another computer so he's watching you hi Sue that's no problem Sue we've only just started so literally I've just taken two A4 pieces of card I popped them into my trimmer cut them at 20 and then I've scored them at 10 to make two DL cards okay and I've used the pick and mix white because I might want to spritz my inks after okay so that's that I'm then going to take my so that's the scoring all done then um, if you go to our website Donna there is a sheet you can download and print out which gives you um, a one one-on-one -on -one, uh, ink and there's also a YouTube video that we did on the live about the one-on-one -on -one inks as well okay so you should find that on our YouTube and on our Facebook on our website as well so what I'm going to do now I'm going to take this blue I've decided to do navy blue on this one but I've done black on the other cards <coughs> sorry just finished some French onion soup no problems on her so what i'm going to do i'm going to cut two pieces out of this navy blue which is going to be nine and a half centimeters okay so there's one there's two and i'm going to turn them two around now and cut them to 20 and a half centimeters okay and that'll give me a nice matte layer to the front of my card okay so I'm going to do that for the second one as well there we are and the garden's just shaved the leg to the 101 as well okay I know there's like a battlefield out there with ink pads so it is a good way of finding out what's actually 
what inks are good for and what you can actually do with them. Okay, so I've now got my two bases to the side there and my first matte layers. Now, I've now got three, piece, three pieces left from those two pieces, three pieces of card. I've got a piece of blue and I've got two pieces of white and I'm going to cut all these to the same size. Okay, so I'm actually going to cut it to <coughs> nine centimeters. So that's nine centimeters by 20 centimeters. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to do the second one. Nine by 20. And then the blue one as well. Nine by 20. Okay. So that now is literally all the guillotine cutting that I need to do, unless you want to do a sediment later, but I shall pop that, I'll just pop that away in a minute. Okay. Hi, Jill. Right, so what I'm going to do first is take my blue piece that I've just cut to 9 by 20. And out of my square nesting dies, I'm just going to pick one that I want to use, okay? So I think that would be nice there. It's sort of central there, and if I get another one there, another one there, then that's fine, okay? So that's what I'm gonna use. So I take the die I'm gonna use, and all I do now is, that's two centimeters from the edge of the die, and that's just over. But I don't mind it being a little higher or lower, whichever way you do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my two centimetre mark on there, the mark with a white pencil, and then I'm going to make a line across there. Okay, I don't know if you can see that line. Yeah, you can just see it on there, yeah, that's lovely. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to centralize my first piece okay so i'm going to put that in the middle that is at seven that is just over seven so i'm going to take over a little bit seven and two seven and two okay so what we do then we just take that and then all i'm going to do is just Take it over, I'm just going to make another little mark there, another mark there. So I'm just making the gaps sort of there, about the same, there and there. Okay, so now I have some pencil marks there, and I've also got the bottom ones there. Okay, so this is where it helps you out, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is take a couple of pieces of tape, okay? This is hunky-dory tape. I think we're out of stock with this at the moment, but because it's gonna be under pressure as well in the machine, I'm still dabbing it on my T-shirt and tap it on your skin, you know, just to get a bit of tack off it. I'm gonna start with my middle one just on the blue 
for now. Line the knit of the pencil line there. Okay, I'm going to centralize it to the pencil lines I've got there. So it's flat along that pencil line there and it's in between my two pencil marks there. Okay, so don't forget if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them and be afraid. So I've just brought in my A5 Big Shot. Okay, and we do the Big Shot now in, at the shop as well. I'm just going to pop that through so it might crack. off nice and gently okay because there's my blue bit and I can keep that for another card I won't be using it on this one okay and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take the die again I'm going to line it up on the line along the bottom and I'm going to tape it so I've lined it on the line and I put it between the two pencil marks there again as well. And I pop that through. So what we're forming here is actually a template. Okay. So if you do any of these cards again, you wouldn't need to do the template again. You could just keep this template and use it constantly for every single card. Okay. I hope everybody is okay and not too cold today. Gavin messaged me when he got in the car this morning, when he got to work, and said that it was took the photo of the temperature this morning and it was minus seven and a half. So it was nice and cold this morning. So that's all I'm doing. I'm taking the die to the bottom line again, centralizing it to my two pencil bits. And I'm going to do that again, okay? And we're going to pop that through the machine. Now I always like to put it near me and then take it through. So that's what you see there. Okay. by cutting M3 if it takes any paper off on your thing it doesn't matter because it's just the template as well so now we have a template okay and we're going to need that for a little bit later but remember you've still got these blue pieces you can use on another card so you can put the edges in the middle of the three of them and we're going to be using that die again so I'll do I'll leave that with that okay Was everybody happy with that? Oh, lovely Tracy, that sounds absolutely marvellous. Nice water bottle. You might have to have one there. Or a nice wheaty bag in bed. Oh, lovely. So now I've got my uh, non-stick mat. Okay, and this is it's just mm, a thick bit of mylar and this is just so I can ink and spritz and stuff like that okay <coughs> just gonna swivel water so on these I used pixie powders okay and what I actually did was just in fact, I'll get a scrap bit just to show you, because I want to show you how I got that background. I've got plenty of scrap in that type of card. Okay. So with the pixie powders, I just sprinkled a tiny amount of the powder on. So that's the teal. A 
and this is Beyond the Blue. And then what I did, I just I wanted it to go to all the edges. So when you're doing it on your pieces that we cut, just going to do your two pieces there. Just do that, and then what I did, I just took a nice little cloth and just sort of tapped it. So I'm not removing too much of it, but I'm just sort of spreading the colour a bit, really. Don't lose too much of the shimmer then. Okay. And it gets to the end and then you can add a little bit more darker around the edge if you want to you can add a bit of green in if you've got so i did the two blues because i got two blues ready for if i was going to use them for the c but you can use green and blues within it you can use reds and blues yellows and blues yellows and green so you can choose whichever color pixie powders you want and then when that dries that'll be all nice and shimmery and we'll use it as we're going to use a bit later okay so i'll just put that to the side so that's all i've done with the pixie powders okay but i'm going to use inks tonight to show you something a bit different okay just going to this clean So is everybody ready for Christmas as well? Or are you still struggling to get those last little bits? <clears throat> yes, you can use the with the Keyless Whispers, as Gavin calls them, the Airless Misters. Yes, you can use all of them as well. If you've mixed uh, pixie powders within a water bottle, you can spritz them as well. So you can use any of them. If you've got the hard shimmer paints, you can add water to them. Brush them on roughly and then mix, spritz some water. So you can make your backgrounds in whichever way you want. Okay. So the secret to this is we've got two pieces of the white card, which is exactly the same size. Uh, week Sunday is Christmas Day. Okay, so what I'm going to do just the food to sort out now. Oh, God, crikey, seven people moving in for Christmas. That's... So this is just excess ink that was on there. I'm just taking that off first. <coughs> I thought she was too. <coughs> so what I'm doing, I'm just taking a smoothie. You could use distress brushes. Just tapping on some of this light colour, which is tumbled glass and it's a distress ink so it's a dye based ink could use your distress oxides as well and then i'm using a dye based harmony which is ocean blue and this is a, just a different color blue it is a different color blue i might not lock it at the moment but it is and i only wanted this i wanted this to be sort of a bit different because it's the sea, so I want different types of blues in it. I don't care about it being too even because if you've got water reactive dye based inks or distress oxides, you can still you can still wet the card. Okay, and you can still go in. Sort of soften areas. You can do lines so that drags colour around. I'm not worried too much because it's the sea, so it needs to be a bit rough. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit more ink in there. There. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm mean, quite happy with that. That looks a bit blotchy, but don't forget I've got a stamp on that later as well. Okay. This might get a little bit loud now because I want to dry that. So just going to bring in my heat gun. Okay. And I'm just going to dry that. Yeah, should have done it purple and did the lovers, Tracy. Would have been your favourite then. But yeah, Julie would love it. She could probably catch up on YouTube and shit. Just keep leaning all this with them. Yes, you can put Pixie's sparkles or pixie powders over over your inks as well so you get a little bit of a shimmer um, so yeah that's not a problem at all you can do that as well okay I'm just making sure that's nice and dry that's lovely there you go that's nice and dry I'm just going to dry my mat off Okay, and now I've got this piece of card. Now I just, if it's quite clearly, I just bend it over the table, over the end of the table. Okay, and I know it's all wonky wonky at the moment, but that doesn't matter either. Okay. So as you can see, the pixie one is all dry in nicely, so you can leave it to dry naturally. Stops the card from curling. Okay. But I've got mine here. So the other thing I want now is a bit of scrap. So with the press to impress, somebody who hasn't used it before. Yeah, wonky donkey, yeah. So for the press to impress it's got a foam piece in there. If we're using a rubber stamp and it has a foam background on it, which is why it's a lot thicker, then we need to take that piece of foam out. Okay, so I'm going to take that bit of foam out, pop that to the side, and then I just need a bit of scrap paper. Always got bits of scrap around. Okay, and this is scrap because it's messy, it's already dirty. It's already dirty. This is see my top drawer with all the other scrappy bits. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop that into the corner. What you're going to think of now is where you can put your magnets to hold it. So lucky for me it's got a big area that I can actually do that too. Okay, let's have a look. Lift it there, possibly. So let's just use three. Okay, so we're going to just use three magnets. And you just work out whether your stamp will fit on it, and it will. Okay. So with rubber mounted stamps as well, she usually got a piece of card on the back, or we'll have a piece of plastic on the back. Okay. But if the plastic says pull view, that's just to remove it off the plastic, the plastic cavity sheet it's on. Don't try to pull it completely off. Or you can ruin the stamp okay so what I'm doing now I'm just making sure this is slightly over the edge because there's a slight lift to this stamp so I'm just making sure slightly over the edge of the blue card okay I'll put that one on there and I'm going to 
to pick up my stamp. Okay. Then I'm going to take my Versafine clay. And this is where it all starts to come together. So with the Versafine clay, or any other ink pad, especially ones with a sponge. Okay, these haven't got a sponge. It's got a foam. It's got felt up this one. All right. So just gently tap until you can see all the ink is shiny on your stamp and everything is covered. So if you don't get it all the first time, with the press to impress, you can go back over the top. Wonky donkey. Is that a winky wonky donkey? If anybody wants a laugh after this, go and watch a YouTube video with a winky wonky donkey. I promise you a good laugh with that one. Right. So I've made sure all my ink is over that. I'm just going to bring it over and I'm going to stamp that. I'm putting a little bit of pressure towards this end. And then a little bit more pressure there. And then I lift that up and there's my image. Okay. So then what I do, I also take the other piece of white card, which is the same size. Okay. And I ink up this one as well. So I ink this up again. And even and the other thing with the verse one clear is if my card is a little bit wet still, not saturated but a little bit wet, this verse fine clay is not going to move. If I use a dye based ink on it, it will. Okay, so I'm going to bring that in. Just going to stamp that there. And for those who struggle with putting pressure down, if you put your forearm on it and just lean forward on it, and then you'll get a good ink up on there as well. Okay. Okay. Now you can see I've got a straight line down the side. That isn't a problem. Okay. What we do, always, always clean your stamps. Look after your stamps and your stamps will last you a long, long time. Don't look after them, then obviously they won't last you so long. And I know that's clean now, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push that to the side, out of the way. But it usually clean it, make sure it's nice and dry, and just pop. That's nice and dry anyway. Just turn it over, make sure that's dry on the back and pop your bit of paper back on the back and that will protect the stickiness of that as well if it loses its stick just wash that a little just give it a wipe under water and dry it with a bit of kitchen towel or a nice cloth and that will last you for ages then okay now if you've got little white edges because that stamp isn't quite, because that stamp is about 18 and a half centimetres instead of 19 or 20. All right, you can easily take a Sharpie or an alcohol pen and just Go down the edges there, where it's just missed out a little bit. So if there's no right or wrong, let's go off. Just 
just because I didn't put my stamp all the way to the edge. Doesn't matter. Look at the edge, doesn't matter at all. Just do that. And I'll get right to the edge. Okay. I can put that away. Okay. And then what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to give these Gonna give these a quick blast. Although because it's on my pick a mix, my pick a mix white, it's quite absorbent, so it would absorb in quite a bit as well. There we are. So I've now done that. And now we go back to our template. So remember our template we did earlier. Okay. So this is our template and there's a reason we got a template as well, okay? So what we do, we put the template over, okay? Now you can tape this in place if you want. You can tape these together. But what you do, you take your die, just like we used it earlier, and what we do, we slot it back into the grooves. And when you wiggle the die, it'll actually find its place and it'll actually stay in place there. Okay. So again, if you've got a bit of tape, that's on the image you can't push that over so it'll hold it but if you put it on there and you find your your blue sheet underneath or your white sheet when we cut that is moving i'm just gonna move these aside so you can see what i'm doing so i'll bring that in okay so when you put this in if you find your bottom sheet is moving so all you gotta do is Put a little bit of tape here or here and here and hope to hold that down and then it'll stop that from moving but mine's okay okay and you pop that through a bit will just drop out okay so I've now cut that in exactly the same place as that was okay so I remove I remove that I place that back over the top okay put that down Make sure it's in line with what you just cut. Slot that into your next groove. Okay, pop that on and put that through. Like I said, if you find any bits moving, find it's moving you just tape it all down so this is the only part you've got to be careful with so I've got my second hole out I'm just going to pop that back onto there it's all in line the die into the third groove, wiggle it till it finds its space, that's still on the line as well. Okay. Because you're using a stencil, that means you would be going through this, you've got the weight of the, the depth of the stencil and the depth of the two pieces. And because these are 300 gram, Probably not. You could try it. Your your machine might be thick enough 
uh, and powerful enough to do it. But I would rather just go one at a time. And it would put more pressure as well on your top piece. So you might get an edge, which if that's why you might, if you don't mind having a die edge, then that's fine. But, you know, it's, it's trial and error basically. So you can try it. If it works for you, then it works for you. So you can see here, I've actually got my blue area, my blue three pieces, and now I'm going to start with the white. Okay. So I'm going to put my white on. And because my die is already there, on that one, I'm just going to hold that there and put that through. But they do need to be cut precise. I mean, you could just stick the blue and the white one on, and if you want to go freehand and sort of do it by eye to get that, then you can do that. So there we are, we've got that one there, look. And we cut it out to the white. It doesn't take long to do it this way. It just means you're doing it twice, really. Once on the white piece, once on the colour piece. Okay. Just going to slot it into the next one, to the next groove. And we've got to be precise, really, because when we come to doing the next stage, which is the finishing part of the card, then obviously we need them to be precise or as close as you possibly can. You can do that, yeah, and that means then you could actually, um, you could do that, Donna. Donna asked, could you do different size dies? Um, so the first pick is the largest and then going down to size, don't, going down in size. Yes, you can. And what that means then is you could actually just take your blue one and your white one, put them on top of each other, place your die where you want it, place your other die where you want it, and place your other die where you want it, and then cut them. You can use circles, you can use all sorts of other shapes as well. You don't have to just use squares. So this opens up a whole new card thing. If you happen to have um, there is, I think Gavin did do a few lives on it, it's a Creative Expressions um, die that's actually got three windows in it, which is for DLs. So you could actually just use that, but not all of us have got that die. I got it here, but I wanted to show you a technique that you can do if you've just got your normal square dies normal square nesting dies you could use circles triangles you know you can use whatever you want to use okay and that's the secret about all this okay so now i've actually done my stencil i've done my white and i'm just going to pop that back away Oh, I'm glad I answered your question, Donna. Yeah, you could do you could do all sorts of things with that. And by if you were going to do use different size ones, you could even use sort of different shape. You could use different shape dies then as well. So you know, there's nothing to say that you can't use your scallops, your circles, your, your ovals. You know, as long as they can fit within the image, then that's fine. That's that's all you need really. Okay, so what we've got now, we've got three whites, squares, the three blue squares, we've got a white background and we've got a blue background. Okay, so that's quite good. So I'll bring them back in so you can see them. And I'm just getting some foam pads. I 
I think we're not doing too bad on time either. It's gone 22, I think. Yeah. So, what we've got now is we've got my foam pads. My glues. And we've got all my pieces that I need. Okay. So now we can bring in our base cards that we did earlier. And these are DL. Okay. And we've got the two blue pieces to go on top of them. So first thing I'm going to do is, so you can use your all purpose clown, your high tap glue, it, whatever suits you, you just do it. Double sided tape. You just use whatever you want to use, okay? Everybody's got their own favourite clues. I've just realised I've done this whole life, almost, without my glasses on. <laughs> So you treat each card exactly the same, pop out blue matte layer on. So I've decided to go with navy blue on these ones. I'm just going to rub my thumb and finger down the edges like that so that it curls downwards. So you can see it curls that way. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I come to stick it on a card then, it'll actually stay flatter until the glue dries. Look at that. Just the spec savers have just walked in through my door. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. <laughs> oh, look, I can see. <laughs> i got my glasses on now. I can see all your comments now. Okay, so, so all I'm doing, I'm just centralizing that into the center of my navy. I'll do the same with my blue one. So again, run my thumb and finger over the top of there so that it's curling downwards. I can put the glue on there. And because that's gone through the die cutting machine a few times as well, it's actually flattened it out. Because if you remember after I dried it, it was all quite wibbly wobbly and all over the place. So now it's actually okay. Okay, so there's the second base. And then what we do, we go to put a foam pad on the back of each of these. I could have picked square one. You can put some all the way around if you want. That's three. Again, these are curling a little bit, so I'm just going to curl them downwards. One. Two. I don't tend to drink tea or coffee this time of the night. <laughs> it does look like a film reel, so you know you can do that. You can put little photos of people in there. You can just do that as a playing card with a background. You can do whatever you want with it, okay? So what we've got to do now, we've got to figure out where everything goes. So this bit with the mermaid goes over this side. I'm just lining up everything. 
And I got my dive in on the fish. And then we got this one here, which we've got a little shark, and then we've got a little shark there, and then that there. So that is that one. That's nice, isn't it? See, so it gives you a different perspective to everything. And then we're going to go into this one. So we know the mermaid is to the right, to the left, to the left, to the left. Um, I think we have got this seaside one in and I think we've actually got the stargazer in at the moment but I don't think I've got any of the other ones that I've got <coughs> as some of these were much older ones but there are um, there are Christmas ones as well that we have so as long as they're DL ones then you You'd be fine, really. As long as the DL stamps. But I don't know how many we have got, Jill, so... So if we need it, I get on the website and order it. <laughs> yeah, so we've had this for ages. Absolutely ages. Are these in quite a while? Just making sure my sharks are in line. So there we are. So that's that one. And then of course a card wouldn't be a card without a sentiment. So we're going to do a sentiment now as well. Okay. the grab I'll use one of them I think might just use one of my Welsh ones Put a couple of Welsh sentiments on there. Okay. Um, so right. I'm gonna put. So one with father and one with son. Okay. Oh, that's okay, Judith. I hope you're okay, my lovely. Hope that move is going and the, the house is okay. So look, yep, that fit. So I've got a nice little acrylic block. So like I said, it doesn't have to be big sentiment you can put happy birthday on there you can put whatever you want I'm just gonna go with nice little simple ones proud brother dad is that fun Always put your stamps back on your thing as soon as you finish with them because they can stick to all sorts of things and then you know could stick to a bit of paper that you're throwing out and then you end up losing a stamp that you don't really want to lose 
so I always a stickler for putting my stuff onto the carry sheet straight away and I'm not gonna fuss too much with a guillotine I'm gonna go freehand with the scissors to cut these a nice straight hand <laughs> And then look at the crowd. Yeah, the Welsh stamps are lovely. I'm not sure if we've got any of them left now. There was an actual shopkeeper. How the great special slim light collection that comes up to with three boxes, but it has stitching. Oh, that would look lovely with the stitching. Helen? That would absolutely look stunning with the stitching. Remember I said about these little squares that come off? <laughs> They're going to come in handy now for me to mat and layer my sentiments. So these could just be thank you cards, get well cards, happy retirement cards, you know. Could be for somebody who's into scuba diving because there's a diver in there. Could be for a fisherman because there's fishes in there. So there we are. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a foam. I'm going to grab a foam pad. They are good, quick and easy cards and the fact that you're then working to get two cards done at the same time, it means you're killing two birds with one stone really. Yeah, for someone who's a nervous wreck, yeah. Or for somebody who's not very well in hospital. Sorry you're a wreck at the moment. Hope you get better soon. <laughs> so I'm going to put proud on this one. Yeah. I'm going to put dad on this one. Like I said, there's Christmas ones and all sorts of other ones. So... If you are using the Creative Expressions three block die, then just make sure that you lined it up on your card so it's perfect with each one. Even if you've got to have your card bigger to fit the die exactly, and then stamp two pieces exactly the same, and then cut them down after you die cut them so that you can get them in exactly the same place. So that's the only thing I would suggest really. So there we are. So we've now got a card with dad and a card with brother in Welsh. Okay. And that is how to do a two for a two for one. Two cards at the same time as making one. So, yeah. And I can show you now. So if you're using the Pixie Sparkles or Pixie Powders, I would just give your card a wipe before you start stamping. Because what that will do then, it'll take any of the extra sparkly glitter off and you won't get it sticking to your stamp for that. 
it's all shimmery now. So that up. See if you can see the shimmer on that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's the shimmer. So you could have that behind it instead of the plane. Well, there you are. You could that, like that, and that, like that. So they, that was the ones I did. Cut the green and blue after that one. It's amazing. Thank you so much for your time and inspiration. That's okay, Donna. No problem at all. So there we are. So I hope you all enjoyed that little video. Um, if you do want to catch up with it again or watch it again, because you want to make sure you get in something right if you want to give them a try, then um, just go on to uh, our Facebook and it'll be under Lives. And also you can follow them on uh, Valley Craft Limited YouTube as well. Okay, so glad you enjoyed Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for all the loves and the likes and the questions. It's always good to answer the questions while we're here. If you're unsure of something. And like I said, when we do lives again, we will probably do them at seven o'clock again because I think a bit few more people uh, can make that time. Okay, so. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for your order. Um, do I tell them? Yes. Um, I think we're having a few sales. Thank That's okay, ma'am. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Jill. Um, we're having a few sales in the shop Saturday, Monday and Tuesday this week. Um, so don't forget, um, if you're free coming in, they'll all be set out on the class tables. And you can just go around and pick up what you want okay uh, thank you again for joining us thank you for all your support and if i don't see you before christmas everybody have a good one bye